welcome to Incredible Journeys, Brands and Leaders, a special series that puts the spotlight on some of India's most popular brands and makes you meet the leaders who are building them. On the show today, we are exploring leading telecom infrastructure player HFCL that's playing a significant role in the growth of Indian railways, defence sector, smart cities, homeland security and many others. Take a look. Founded in 1987, HFCL has made its mark with its innovative, customized and competitive product offerings in the high technology telecommunications infrastructure sector, helping its customers stay ahead of competition in technology and network efficiency. Over the past three decades as a telecom solutions provider, HFCL has implemented several greenfield projects such as setting up of CDMA and GSM networks, satellite communications and wireless spectrum management. The company is also focused on serving new high growth opportunities in railways, homeland security, smart cities and defense sectors. And now to tell us more about HFCL, we are joined by the company's managing director, Mahindra Nahata. Thank you so much for joining us on the show today, Mr. Nahata. Uh, first up, uh, HFCL is a leading telecom infrastructure company. Tell us a little bit about your product range at this point in time. Uh, what kind of solutions do you offer and what is the USP of the company? Well, we offer uh, solutions for telecommunication sector, railway sector, defense sector and also surveillance and security systems. So these are our four areas of business. In terms of product manufacturing, we manufacture uh, transmission equipment, high capacity access equipment and equipment like Wi-Fi systems. What are some of your unique challenges at this point in time and how stiff is competition and what is your current market share like? In terms of competition in our uh, solution business, there are four or five companies in India who, have, uh, who are always competing with us. Number of times we win, number of times some others also win. It is good that uh, they are strong competitors, so product quality always remains good. Well, in terms of technology, we have got our own R&D facilities. We have more than 100 people working. Right. So, you know, we always try to remain ahead in terms of technology, design our own products. As a result of that, you know, not only we can sell in India, we can sell in export market also. Defense communication, where, you know, a uh, lot of uh, business we have got. Our market share may be more than 50%. Right. And in terms of uh, turnkey solution for fiber optic cable, again, we have a significant market share. In terms of fiber optic cable business, which we manufacture, again, we are one of the leading uh, manufacturers of fiber optic cable in India. And how big is the India opportunity for HFCL given the imminent 5G rollout and uh, fiber to the home gaining traction and popularity right now? We see a significant market opportunity for us in India. And then we are not limited to India alone. We are exporting also. We export our fiber optic cable to more than 40 countries. Apart from that, we see that fiber to home is not only being rolled out in India, it's being rolled out in Western countries also right now. Right. So there also we see a significant market opportunity, not only for supplying a fiber optic cable, but also for turnkey execution of such projects. Talking of these 40 countries that you're present in, how huge is your geographical footprint right now? What are the key establishments or, you know, maybe governments as well as private establishments that you're working with? Well, we export to Middle East, we export to Western Europe, and exporting to Western Europe, that speaks of our quality of fiber optic cable because uh, we compete with the world leaders there. We have exported to North America also and also to South America. And you've achieved significant breakthroughs in railway communications uh, in many parts of the world, not just in India. So what's the scope of work that you do in that space and uh, how do you chart the roadmap ahead? You know, in railway communication, we are working with the turnkey contractors who get turnkey contracts for building entire railway system. Mm -hmm. For example, we have got orders from Alstom, who have got order from uh, Indian Railways uh, for DFCC, De Dedicated Freight Corridor. Right. They have downloaded uh, their communication part of their network to us. Right. Similar thing has been done by China, Tele uh, China Railway. Similar thing has been done by Larson and Tubro in India. Not only that, we have got orders from Larson and Tubro for building uh, telecommunication network for Dhaka Metro and Mauritius Metro both and that work is in progress. Right and you're also enabling the smart cities mission you're also present in defense communications take us through your role and you know how significant is uh, HFCL in enabling both of these uh, sectors. Look in defense communication we are playing a major role 
the Network for Spectrum program, which has been launched by Indian Army in partnership with uh, DOT and BSNL, mm -hmm. we have got major orders there. Mm -hmm. Our order book, uh, including the orders executed, would have been around 8,000 crores in that arena. Number of orders have been partially executed, or major part of them have been executed. Mm -hmm. Number of them are under execution. So there we have played a very, very significant role. Apart from that, in defense communication sector, number of other RFPs have been floated by Indian Army. We have participated in that. That includes high capacity radio relay, that includes electronic fuses, it includes uh, unmanned aerial vehicles for small size. So these are areas we are working with defense. We are, but we are limiting ourselves to communication and electronics. We are not going into non-related areas. In terms of smart city, our role is limited to the surveillance systems. Okay. We have got our own core software command and control software, which is able to interact with all kinds of peripherals and give a combined solution to the uh, customer to s visualize and see what is happening. Great. And your current order book is of over 10,000 crore rupees. You said a significant amount of that is dedicated to the defense sector. What else is in this order book? You know, our order book is yeah, around 10,000 crores. A large portion of that is from defense communication from network form spectrum program. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, we have got orders for fiber optic cables for various customers. Uh, then we have got orders for Bharatnet for turnkey execution of projects in Punjab and Jharkhand. We have got orders from uh, various uh, uh, turnkey service providers for supplying fiber optic cables. We have got orders for uh, export of fiber optic cables. So that all put together constitutes about, about 10,000 crores of orders. Right. And take us through your state-of-the-art manufacturing capabilities. You have significant capacities. You've recently expanded in the uh, optic fiber cable capacities. You're also looking at backward integration. So take us through these moves. What are you expecting to gain out of these? And uh, how are you seeing how big is the growth opportunity, especially in the OFC space? You know, our strategy from the beginning has been to build modern manufacturing facilities. We started with Solan in Himachal Pradesh for telecommunication equipment manufacturing, which still exists. Then we have built up a fiber optic cable facility in Goa, which is again a very modern facility. Uh, we have been changing the machines as the technology grows. We have built up a facility in Chennai in our subsidiary STL Limited, again for fiber optic cable manufacturing, again very modern facility. Now we are uh, building a facility in Hyderabad to manufacture fiber which is the significant part of the raw material for uh, fiber optic cable. And that facility would be in production uh, from sometime January this year. Trial production would start uh, as early as December. And uh, again, that's a very modern facility uh, in India. And uh, in terms of growth in fiber optic cable, I see a significant growth coming up from first quarter of next year. Right now, FTTH is being rolled out by Reliance Geo. That's a good growth opportunity. Uh, from first quarter of next year, we expect Bharatnet program, which has been put on hold for some time, as it has now been migrated to PPP instead of being rolled out by the PSNL and USOF. So I hope this PPP program would pick up from sometime first quarter of 2020. Uh, 20. So once that happens, the fiber optic cable demand would pick up. But then 5G is coming up in the next one or two years. Yes. Once 5G is there, you need more densification of fiber optic cable network. Mm -hmm. At that time, I see a significant growth in fiber optic cable requirement. And your reaction to the government's latest move of merging MTNL and BSNL, uh, and what sort of an opportunity does that present to companies like yours? Look, it was long awaited. It's a good decision government has taken. Because BSNL and MTNL both are strategic uh, companies for government of India. Because a lot of defense communication, government's own strategy communication runs on BSL network. Mm. Uh, BSL in past has proven to be a reliable communication uh, technology provider in terms of uh, uh, services uh, to public and to government. So it was it is a good move that the government is able to revive them by infusing about 70,000 crores. In terms of companies like us, it again is a good market opportunity mm. because uh, you have then another customer who is expanding its network, which it was not able to do in past because of not having money. Right. Now they have money available from government, they would expand their network. They have already announced 4G would be, uh, spectrum would be given to them. So 4G would be rolled out. So it all put together 
you know, it's a good market opportunity for indigenous suppliers like us. Right. And uh, your reaction to the global economic slowdown, a number of sectors, especially the auto sector is currently in a slump. Uh, as far as your company is concerned, your business is concerned, are you feeling the slowdown at all? You can, apart from fiber optic cable business, which is there is a temporary slowdown mm -hmm. because of uh, BharatNet being pushed forward. Apart, and this is a temporary slowdown. You know, I don't think this is any major slowdown because of global slowdown or any other reason. Right. But it's a temporary slowdown. But apart from that, we don't see any slowdown in telecom sector right now. Mm -hmm. Rather, it is growing. I would say it is growing. Right. And uh, the World Bank's latest rankings on ease of doing business uh, have shown that India has moved up another couple of spaces, moved up to uh, about 63 in, in world ranking. Yours is a company that has been in the business for about three decades now, so you've seen, uh, you know, successive governments worked uh, through successive environments and policy changes, etc. So today, how would you rate the ease of doing business uh, in India and uh, for all those who want to invest in India, what's your message? Oh, well, you know, environment has improved tremendously. One of the examples I can give GST. Mm -hmm. Before GST, you know, whenever you would dispatch your equipment or material somewhere, the lorries would go through 20 octroi checks and it would reach in three weeks time. Now there are no octroi checks, just a simple GST and the same material reaches in seven days time without any problem. This is just one example I have given you. Similarly in income tax, in GST, in other areas where uh, there was a lot of government hindrances that have all been removed, it has become much easier for you to transact your business. Right. In terms of foreign direct investment, any opportunity you have for any anybody to invest, every state government welcomes you. So there is a lot of things which have happened which makes your life as a businessman much easier. That's good to hear and on that positive note, let's take a short break at this point. On the other side, the conversation continues with Mr. Mahendra Nahata of HFCL right here on Incredible Journeys, Brands and Leaders. Stay with us. Welcome back to Incredible Journeys, Brands and Leaders. On the show today, we are exploring HFCL and I'm in conversation with the Managing Director of the company, Mahendra Nhata. Uh, so, you've recently launched the first ever Made in India designed by HFCL Wi-Fi solution. So, tell us more about it, the potential that it unlocks, the opportunity that it presents to you for growth. Look, this is, uh, we saw that uh, broadband is happening in India and to have broadband at home or offices or hotspots in the public areas, you need Wi-Fi system. And we saw that nobody is manufacturing that in India. And even the prices were pretty high. So we decided to design that in India. We have designed it by ourselves. IPR rests with us. It's the most modern solution comparable to any other company in the world. And it's not only the access point which you see at home, but it is the entire system behind, which is good for home usage, uh, for enterprise usage and also for telecom service provider kind of usage where they install lakhs of such uh, uh, access points uh, countrywide right. so it is able to cater to all kind of needs. The market potential is not only in India but since we already export our fiber optical cable to many of the countries the same countries we would be marketing a Wi-Fi equipment also. Right. This unlocks a good market opportunity India and abroad. Right, okay. So you're constantly innovating and bringing out new products. Uh, tell us a little bit about what else is in the pipeline and how do you really build this culture of innovation within the company? You know, apart from Wi-Fi system, we have also come out with uh, radios, which would be doing the backhaul of the traffic of Wi-Fi systems, which mm -hmm. has already been part of this Wi-Fi development. Apart from that, we are working on several other products. One of the, uh, which I mentioned to you, the long range radar. Yeah. We are also working on electronic fuses, which is required by uh, use in artillery by Indian Army. Uh, nobody has been able to design that in India till now. We are designing that. We are also working on electro optics, yeah. which is like the night vision devices, which are also being designed uh, by our company, maybe in partnership with other R&D houses. So those are the, some of the products which are under design at the moment. And constantly we are looking for other product areas which have good market potential in India and abroad. Okay. So we would be working on designing those products also. But these are the major products which we are designing right now. So what sort of investments do you make in research and development? Uh, yearly investment with all these products happening, 
in the next financial year should be around 40 to 50 crores. Interesting. And are you constantly making an effort to increase R&D investments every year? Oh, absolutely. Because in telecommunication, as you know, is a fast growing sector in technology. Our uh, whole strategy is to come up with the new products. And with these new products which are locally designed, you are able to market not only in India but worldwide. Right. And once it is your own product, your profit margin also remains to be good, you know. Rather than a product which you are doing on a technology transfer basis, here the pro profit margins is always better. Right. And how important are M&A transactions in your growth story? You recently acquired a controlling stake in Radif, which is a company that specializes in radio frequency and microwave systems. So, uh, you know, how significant has that acquisition been? And are you constantly on a lookout for uh, acquiring good companies? You know, we have not had many M&As. This is one of the first, I would say, where we have acquired any stake. It's a small uh, acquisition, not a major acquisition. But we are trying to develop that company, design more and more products, you know. And long-range radar, which I mentioned, is being designed by that company only. Other products which we believe we would be starting in that company is the 5G antennas, for example. Once 5G comes, you know, there would be huge demand for 5G antennas. So that company also has specialty in antenna business. So we will be designing 5G antennas there. Right. And digital technologies like Internet of Things, machine learning, artificial intelligence, etc., they're all transforming businesses like never before. At HFCL, uh, is there an effort to leverage some of these technologies? Are you working with data, analyzing, uh, and really getting insights from data on a daily basis? Well, we are working on some of them, yeah. but no such exact plan has yet been finalized. So once we finalize these plans, we will start working on a couple of that. We cannot work on all of them, you know, it's too difficult. But one or two areas, we, out of these areas, we will pick up, whether IoT or AI, and we will start working on that. Right, okay. And let's talk a little bit about uh, numbers and growth now, and how has the growth trajectory of HFCL been in the last couple of years? What sort of numbers are you chasing this fiscal? Well, you know, growth trajectory has been pretty good uh, in terms of... Uh, Numbers, we have increased our profit margin significantly and uh, I believe that uh, whole effort is to bring in sustainability in these margins and profitability. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think, you know, going forward, we look that uh, we would be able to have significant uh, growth in revenue and profitability both. Right. And what do you think are going to be your key growth factors in the next couple of years, key driving factors? Key driving factor, you know, our whole consideration is improve margins. Revenue increase is important, but more important would be increased margins, mm -hmm. which can happen with the good contracts you get. And also at the same point of time, uh, your own developed products you sell more and more. Right. So our whole strategy is to have more and more own developed products and sell that not only in India and abroad and get reasonably better margins out of that. All right. And at HFCL, you also believe in giving back to society their significant CSR initiatives that you have. Tell us a little more about them and which one is closest to your heart. Well, we have taken few CSR initiatives, which includes uh, one significant of that is uh, mobile medical vans, mm -hmm. which we run many parts of the country, which has got doctor, which has got blood test lab, which are compounder, and we distribute generic medicines also. Right. So we would have seen thousands of patients uh, out of such kind of medical vans, which go around in few places in the country. Probably we see, uh, our doctors see 500 patients every day. And these go to rural areas where there are no primary health centers available. So this has given a good uh, relief to those people in those areas where they can see do doctor at their own doorstep. Right. Apart from that, we have put uh, uh, CSR investment in uh, old age homes, uh, plastic free uh, issues, you know, where we can, uh, you know, make the plastic uh, areas free of plastic, you know, those kind of things, you know, we are trying to do. Okay. And from here on, where do you want to see HFCL? What is your long-term vision for the company? Well, right now, our revenue last year has been about 4,500 crores. In five years' time, we would like to it go beyond double. Great. So, wish you all the best for that. And thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, with that, it's a wrap of this episode of Incredible Journeys, Brands and Leaders. That was the inspiring story of HFCL. We'll be back next time with lots more. Thank you for joining us today. Goodbye.